Who? Okay, so by a show of hands, how many people have read through chapter five? Uh, most of them. Through chapter four? Through chapter five. Through chapter five. Oh, Who's oh, got oh, through yeah. chapter five? Who's gotten through chapter four? Yes. Okay. okay, chapter three. Baruch dish. Okay. All right, well, okay. So we're going to, I'm going to try to go over just chapter three and four today. Depending on time, we may start on chapter five. Chapter five, I'll state it again. It's probably going to be a doozy for a lot of people because it's, um, if you haven't had a class that covered binary, counting in hex, ox, octal, that kind of thing. I actually, they don't even touch octal in here, just uh, binary, hex, and decimal. Um, it's, it takes a while to kind of get the hang of, so I'll, I'll do chapters three and four today, and then if we, um, we have time, I'll probably start on chapter five, just kind of a, an initial um, covering of counting a binary, and then we'll probably dedicate most of the next class to chapter five. If you know binary counting, how hard is hex? Um, it's, it's really not hard at all. Hex is, uh, you know, basically sets of four binary characters or whatever. So. We'll get into that. Yeah, because you know zero one, you know zero and one. Okay. And then like they go like it's one, two, eight. four, eight. I think it's the first four, if I remember right. Yeah, eight, two. That's binary. Eight, right. All right. Well, we'll start on chapter three then. Uh, we may have a few other stragglers, but I see class has been cut almost in half. So we'll see how long it takes till there are only two or three people here. <laughs> Uh, so uh, today, we're starting off chapter three, data link networking concepts, uh, data link layer being layer two. Um, so a lot of the stuff on this first slide is actually no longer used. Um, these are a few data link protocols. Um, so starting off with token ring, I think I talked a little bit about token ring um, during the last class. You probably won't see much of it. Uh, the 802.5 specification has pretty much been outdated. Um, once again, the only time I've ever really messed with it is uh, pulling it out of, you know, pulling the cabling out of uh, a school. And so I'm guessing that your your careers, unless you go somewhere that's just got really, really outdated uh, networking equipment, you probably won't see any token ring. And then uh, FIDI, FDDI, fiber-based uh, ring technology, also is uh, relatively outdated. Um, it's a uh, ANSI uh, X32T9.5 specification. I don't think you'll have to memorize that. Um, a lot of times they'll uh, they'll usually be set up as a dual ring, so it's got a little bit of redundancy um, outside of token ring. That you know, if you lose connection on one of those rings, you still have something left. Um, and then, pretty much, few if any questions on the CCNA will pertain to uh, FDDI. I don't remember having any on token ring or FDDI on on mine. Um, and then Ethernet. That's the, uh, the grand king of uh, data link protocols today, most commonly used medium. Um, and try not to confuse, there. I guess there's really not two types of Ethernet, but I think of it as two types of Ethernet. Don't confuse Ethernet, the data link protocol, with Ethernet, the cabling standard. Um, Ethernet, to me, Ethernet cabling is a little bit of a misnomer. Um, it's called Ethernet cable because usually you've got Ethernet frames passing over it, but um, you know when you have Ethernet cable, it's usually actually Category Five or Category Six, you know, cabling. So I, it's very, very common for it to be referred to as Ethernet cabling, but I kind of think of them as uh, as two separate things, and you should too when you're thinking about the data link protocol for Ethernet. Um, so Ethernet, the king of data link for now at least, uh, and for the foreseeable future. IEEE 802.3 specification. Um, it's actually got two sublayers: the <coughs> MAC layer, which we, we talked a little bit before, you know, your MAC addresses that are, are hard-coded onto the, um, the NIC of every device, and then the LLC layer uh, that handles um, some sequencing and some other things. Um, there's a three different primary address types for Ethernet. Unicast, multicast, and broadcast, which um, I'll be going into each of those individually. So uni unicast is um, usually when you're sending data to a single subscriber. So we're not even looking at the IP layer right now, so you'll notice that the addresses list he listed here are not IP addresses, they are uh, MAC addresses. And so, um, you know, a, a unicast layer two Ethernet frame is from one unicast address to a single other unicast address. Uh, pretty simple. That's going to be like what most of the data passing is, is going to be. One, one single device to another single device on the layer two. Um, additionally, there's multicast addresses for uh, data link. It's when you're sending to multiple, um, multiple nodes 
on that uh, that network, but not all of them. So in this case, there's actually a, a certain set of uh, MAC addresses that are reserved for multicast. Um, you can see the destination address right here, that 0100.5e123456. Uh, Anytime you see a, a layer 2 MAC address um, that's going to a 0100.5e anything, it's going to be a multicast address for your layer 2 protocol. And then obviously the next step is a broadcast address which sends to everybody. And just like you had that 0100.5e start off um, for your, your multicast address, anytime you see a broadcast address, it's going to be all ones, so the, the MAC address is going to be all Fs, FFF all the way across. And that's going to go to everything on that node. Okay. Um, some of the physical Ethernet standards. I'm not actually going to uh, delve real far into this. Um, I know that on the CCNA I probably had one or two questions that pertain to physical Ethernet standards. I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend a whole, whole lot of time of trying to memorize that because if you guys get through um, chapter three, you'll notice there's like several pages where it gets really down and dirty on like, you know, 100 base T4, 100 base DX, 100 base FX, you know, for pages and pages and pages, and it's just a lot of memorization. Um, you do need to be kind of familiar with some of the the more um, common types, but you don't have to necessarily memorize every single one of those. Um, but you you do have, however, have to be kind of familiar with how the naming convention works and what that pertains to. So, like here, and this example right here has got ten base five. So, the ten represents the maximum transmission speed, so ten megabits per second. Uh, if, you saw, if you saw 100 there, it'd be 100 megabits per second. If you saw 1,000, uh, it'd be a gigabit per second. Uh, the base represents the baseband signaling mode uh, that only allows one signal per wire at a time. Um, actually, most of them are, are base. Um, I didn't actually see any of them that they covered in the CCNA that were not. Um, and then the 5 represents the maximum transmission length, in this case 500 meters. Um, so usually that's that's going to round off to a meter uh, value. Like on 10 base 2, uh, you would think it would be uh, two, 200 meters. It, it's actually good for up to 185 meters. They round off to, to 2, so they don't have to put 1.85 or some kind of really crazy um, listing there. And then the, the categories of cabling, like we talked about before, there's, there's the... You know, Ethernet, the cabling standard, and Ethernet, the, the framing standard. Uh, your category 3, 4, 5, 5E, and 6 uh, usually have varying transmission speeds. And then you'll also have, you know, shielded category 6, that kind of thing, where you kind of protect the wire from outside interference. What's the difference between uh, 5 and 5E? Uh, I don't actually know off the top of my head. Let's look. Yeah, it is. Number of twists in the cable. Right, so number of twists in yeah, I think you're. I think you're right. Basically, one allows more. I think bandwidth to it. I believe, or less uh, EMI. Uh, category five E data cable that can handle speeds up to one gigabit per second. A popular choice for gigabit Ethernet standards, but it doesn't actually say um, what the levels are for regular five. So, I don't know off the top of my head. Um, I don't know that I ever got a question on it, but uh, we'll look into that and maybe give you a better answer later. The price is different. Yeah, the price is different. <laughs>